There it is, a white van. There's an anonymous white van with no windows over my left shoulder. We promised that when our channel hit 100,000 subscribers, we would review a windowless white van. Well, that day has come. We're about to review that windowless white van in this vast plane of nothingness. Coming up, I'm gonna have an existential crisis. But first, information explosion! So what better place to start than the interior? Huh? Oh, we're just diving right in, are we? What do you think of the style of this van? So what it lacks in style, it makes up for in functionality. There's cup holders, there's little nooks for all your coins, there's these enormous... <laughs> <laughs> They're huge, though they do not pass the straight pipes test because oh you can't extend them. But uh, yeah, they are huge. Oh, and then this is upper console up here where you can store things like these handy ND filters. And now I will forget them. Seats. I'm noticing a conspicuous lack of them. There are only two in the entire van. How do you feel about uh, the front seats here? So from here to here, they're a little bit longer than I'm used to. It's almost as if they're meant for someone who is taller. But otherwise, actually, they're a little bit uncomfortable. They don't offer a lot of mid-back support. When I arrived, I felt like Mr. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Moving to the cargo area. Ha! Huh. I can stand up here quite comfortably. Oh, and down here we've got some D-rings for tying stuff down. We've got six of those all around here. That's pretty cool. This is actually the largest cargo space of any vehicle we've tested on our channel. 323.1 cubic feet. Strangely, the only thing in here is our ill-conceived Men of Micah Drives calendar. What were we thinking? As for safety, there are six airbags in here, which is a lot for only two people. And there is a reverse sensing system and a backup camera, though the backup camera is hilariously tiny. What do we think, family? Is this windowless white van family friendly? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Though it is a more usable space and a little less scary than I thought. Huh. Rear window test. Nope. High five. I guess that's my cue to do the armrest test. Inborn, that is a uh, fairly soft armrest. It's a little bit high, but I can't keep my hand on the steering wheel. Outboard, that is completely unpadded and uncomfortable, but it is nicely positioned. I'm gonna go 25% on the outboard and 70% on the inboard. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos where we review cars as a family, feel free to subscribe. At a million subscribers, I don't know, something will happen. Style, Woo! <laughs> Let me very quickly thank a very special sponsor, Flying Eye Sunglasses. You guys, they have supported us for so long and they've really stood by our channel as it's changed and we absolutely love their product. It's made by wonderful people. We wear them in the helicopter because they're made of this really special material called brazilamide that allows these super thin frames. Sweetie, show them what's what. So they're very easy to take on and off, even under a headset or helmet. Mine are the ophthalmic line of glasses, which means they come with these removable magnetic tinted lenses, which means I can wear them as my regular glasses, which are so comfortable, or sunglasses. If you're ready to confront a long-standing nemesis and you want aviation-grade eyewear to do so, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code MICA for 10% off. Thank you guys so much. Flying eyes.
What do you think, sweetie? Style thoughts? Okay, the first thing that smacks you in the face is how tall it is. But when I went inside, I was really glad it was that tall because it allows you to walk around standing up. Kiddo, what do you think? Do you like the van? Yes. Do you like how it looks? Definitely. What do you, what do you definitely like about it? Um, I, I really like the color white. I think it's pretty. Kind of looks like the Pope Mobile to me. What I like is the 17 inch wheels, they're kind of stylish, and the nose looks more friendly than I was expecting from a windowless white van. <laughs> I think it looks like the kind of place that you could put some stuff in and people might not steal it. What do you guys think of the style of that windowless white van? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Tell us in the comment section. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram, in motion. Family, there aren't enough seats for us to do this together. I have to do this one alone. You guys, I'm driving the van. First impression, it rides pretty rough. Independent front suspension, uh, live axle rear, and then you've got a body on frame design. There's really no sound deadening either, just raw metal, so it's very loud and, and kind of uh, shaky in here. Ah, ah, big bumps, big bumps. <laughs> For the steering, we have a recirculating ball setup, and look how much I can move the steering wheel and nothing happens. Let's see. Ah, there we go, we're getting some turning. The last time I experienced steering like that, I was driving a Jeep Gladiator. I'm gonna come to a complete stop here, and actually, I'll say the brakes feel pretty good, which makes sense, because this thing can haul a lot of weight. And now, just for fun, let's floor it. Uh-huh. All right, we're going. Yeah. It's not amazing, but uh, it does get up to speed better than I expected. I'll be honest, this is not as horrifying as I was expecting, but you know what I wanna know? What does Evie think? I have never regretted your clapping powers more. As long as I'm here, let me tell you about visibility. Over my right shoulder, it is poor. Over my left shoulder, it is also poor. And I can see nothing out the back. Like having to depend on these shaky side mirrors to not hit a cyclist, ugh. I'll also add that I really prefer driving a small car, and this is the opposite of that. <laughs> you know what? I think that's enough van for me. Hey, have you survived driving the van? I think the Nissan NV is rough and loud, but purposefully so. Yeah, that went better than I would have expected. Moving on to emotion factor. I think it's inherently creepy, but what do you think? What is the emotion factor of the windowless white van? Well, I can see how it's good for keeping your stuff safe if you're hauling a lot of stuff around. That is an excellent point. Yeah, there is an emotion factor here, but I'm struggling with whether it's a good one or a bad one. At the beginning of the video, I teased that I was going to have an existential crisis. Here goes. I've been creeped out by windowless white vans for years, but now that I'm spending time with one, it doesn't seem that bad. If I've been wrong about windowless white vans, what else might I be wrong about? If you're feeling emotionally moved to buy a windowless white van of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below for real, semi-creepy vans in your area. Remarks! Item one infotainment in that it doesn't have it. I was really surprised at how rudimentary this is because the people most likely to need embedded map, people who are going on tour, delivery drivers, people who are really likely to drive a vehicle like this, no problem, it's a big unwieldy van, they'll just be looking at their phone the entire time. It doesn't have nav, but it does have a four speaker audio system and an auxiliary input. So remind me to go to Radio Shack to pick up a cable. That's not a thing anymore. I see. I will mention that the 2017 version, you could get a 5.8 inch touchscreen as an option. They also offered a rear door glass package for only 190 bucks. But if you're committed to that white van lifestyle, why ruin it with windows? 
One area where the Nissan NV really excels is access to the cargo area. These doors open super, super wide. Wow, it's actually more than I expected. 243 degrees on either side, French door style. You got steps to get in super easily. And then there's a sliding side door that locks into place. You got a step there. Access to this van is very, very easy if that's a thing you want. Thank you. As for engine choices, there's the 4-liter V6 with the 5-speed automatic that's in our test car. There's also a 5.6-liter V8 with a 7-speed automatic. As for tow capacity, the V6 can haul 6,900 pounds, while the V8 can haul 9,400 pounds. Among the competitive set, you got the Ford Transit, the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, and the Ram Promaster. If you're eager to buy a windowless white van that's new, look to one of those competitors because Nissan killed the NV in 2021. Aww. If we missed any remarks, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! Oh my. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs>And thinking about the essence of windowless white vans, they seem nefarious because you don't know what's going on inside, but mostly they're just bringing people stuff that they need or hiding tools that people use for work. To me, the windowless white van is the summertime fig eater beetle of transportation. Kind of creepy, but just trying to get by. I think the lesson here is that sometimes it's wise to be a little more curious and a little less afraid. Come on, kiddo. We got a lot of people to thank. Thanks, number one, to Kelly Blue Book for letting me do this with my family. Thanks to Evie and our kiddo for uh, helping us do all the hard work to keep this channel going, but still keeping it fun. I gotta thank Mike Danger, my friend behind the camera. He's such a good dude, go follow him. Uh, who else do we need to thank? Thank you kindly, everyone who supports us on Patreon. We really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, and most of all, Thank you for supporting us and making this channel possible. We really couldn't be here without you. Uh, I think we've done a pretty good job reviewing and surviving this windowless white van. Can I have a five and a five? And you, come get your high five. <laughs>